Bruce McLaren is a New Zealand motor racing hero. He is not only that, but one of the greatest drivers of his time, and of course, he was the founder of what is now a legendary Formula 1 team. Today is the 50th year anniversary of his passing. This is the story of Bruce McLaren. Born in the capital of New Zealand, Auckland, Bruce was a normal kid that attended Meadowbank Primary School. As a nine-year-old, he was diagnosed with Perthes disease in his hip, which meant his left leg was shorter than his right. His parents, named Les and Bruce McLaren, owned a service station and a workshop in Romera, Auckland. Les was a motorcycle enthusiast, but had to give up racing after an injury before Bruce's birth and began racing cars at a club level instead. Bruce would spend his spare hours lurking around the workshop and then developed a passion for cars in his formative years, which is where he began his racing career. Bruce McLaren Les restored an aging Austin 7 Ulster which 14 year old Bruce used in 1952 to enter his first competition which was a hill climb. Two years later he took part in his first real race and showed real promise. He moved to a Ford 10 and an Austin Healey then a Formula 2 Cooper Climax. He immediately began to modify, improve and oddly master it. So much so that he finished runner up in the 1957-1958 New Zealand Championship Series. His performance in the 1958 New Zealand Grand Prix attracted the attention of Aussie Jack Brabham. Because of his obvious potential, the New Zealand International Grand Prix organisation selected him for its Driver to Europe program, designed to give promising Kiwis a chance in the spotlight for a season in the world's big show. McLaren was the first recipient to be followed later on by Denny Holm. Bruce went to Cooper and stayed seven years at that very team. He raced in F2 at the German Grand Prix at the Nürburgring, which featured F1 and F2 cars together. And he shocked the motor racing world with a fifth overall against some of the best in the world. McLaren joined the Cooper Factory F1 team alongside Jack Brabham in 1959 and won that year's USA GP at the age of 22 becoming the youngest GP winner at the time. He followed that up by winning the first race of the 1960 season in Argentina and would finish runner-up that season in his Brabham. He then won the 1962 Monaco Grand Prix and would finish a fantastic third in that season's championship. And the next year founded McLaren Automotive, which we've all come to know and love. McLaren left Cooper in 1965 to race for his own team with teammate and fellow Kiwi, Chris Amon. Amon then left in 1967 to drive for Ferrari and in 1968 Bruce was joined by another Kiwi by the name of Denny Holm who became world champion in 1967 with his problem. Bruce took his fourth career win racing in his McLaren at Spa in 1968, achieving the team's first win as a Grand Prix team. As Holm would win two races in his McLaren Ford, the 1969 season was also quite successful, with McLaren finishing third despite taking zero wins, which proves just how consistent he was. McLaren's design flair and ingenuity were graphically demonstrated in powerful sports car racing. Just as the Can-Am series grew popular with fans in Canada and the USA, the two McLarens finished second twice and third twice in six races. In 1967, they won five of the six races and the following year, the McLarens proved to be dominant, winning all 11 races and in two races they finished 1, 2, 3. But McLaren sports car history doesn't just stop there. Bruce and Amon won the 24 hours of Le Mans in 1966 in a Ford GT40 and only won due to the fact that Ford miscalculated their photo finish with the fact that Le Mans is based off the distance covered. Ford decided to slow down leader Ken Miles for a PR stunt 
with Miles only losing because of Le Mans style start. Bruce, unfortunately, died aged 32 on this day 50 years ago, after his Can Am McLaren crashed while testing at the Goodwood circuit, and had his aero come adrift as he spun and ran into a bunker which was being used as a marshal post. Bruce McLaren's legacy is one that will not be forgotten. With this Formula 1 team still running and being one of the greatest of all time, and the McLaren automotive brand producing some of the greatest cars of all time, such as the McLaren Senna and F1 GTR, not to mention McLaren's GT3 exploits throughout the years, proving that Bruce's legacy does indeed live on. Rest in peace to Bruce, you were one of the best drivers of your time, and you should never be forgotten in anyone's memories. This one's for you.